What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're going to be taking a look at this little legend. This is the AMD Radeon RX 580. It has taken me a long time to actually be able to find one of these and I think I've actually got a pretty decent model but can it actually perform as well as it used to in 2023? Well that's exactly what we're going to find out today. So the AMD Radeon RX 580 is an absolute legend. If you don't already know about this card, where have you been? What kind of rock have you been living under? This has been one of the cards that budget gamers have rejoiced in for a long time. It was originally released in 2017 as pretty much AMD's highest level card at the time. There was the RX 590 just slightly after this one, but this was the one that became extremely popular and that was generally because of its price to performance. For the release price of around just $229 you could pick up a graphics card that would pretty much play anything at the time in 1080p 60fps. Now today of course that doesn't seem that impressive but back in the day this was an absolute monster for the money and a lot of people bought them. They were also extremely popular with miners back in the mining boom which is actually why it took me so long to get hold of one of these. I like to collect cards here in the studio and I like to get some pristine models so trying to find an RX 580 and specifically an 8 gigabyte version which this one is in 2023 can be a little bit difficult especially when you're trying to get a mint condition one but I managed to find one and I paid a pretty decent price for it. Today you can actually pick these up for about £65 and upwards. I managed to get this one for £70 and it came with the original box in mint condition. It isn't even needed a, any kind of a clean, it's still got the tags all on it. I don't really know how much use it's had, but it actually performs exceptionally well. Now there's not a lot more I can actually say about this card. The one that I've got here today is the Sapphire Nitro Plus Radeon RX 580. It was the model that you guys recommended to me as being one of the top tier at the time. It is an 8GB GDDR5 model, which means it'll outlive the 4GB models by quite a bit, especially with the the more modern games coming out needing a lot more VRAM now and for its day it boasted some fantastic specifications. Of course it didn't really keep up with Nvidia at the time. Nvidia were plowing along with the 10 series and they of course had their own legendary card the 1080 Ti which this didn't really come close to at all but for the price you were getting an absolute bargain something that you could game on all day long and pretty much play anything now i've been having a lot of fun with this card over the last week it's been in our benching rig so let's take a look at some benchmarks of what it can do in games that are actually released after it was produced and see how well it's holding up when it comes to them
as we can see from those benchmarks, the card actually performs exceptionally well, particularly for the age it is. If we take a look at some of the results that we got, we should probably totally ignore the 1440p, and that's because this card was never actually designed as being one. We actually managed to only get an average of 60 frames per second in Back for Blood, as well as an average of 82 in Doom Eternal, which is perfectly fine for the card, but for everything else, it kind of struggled to get anywhere near it. So, as of course, our magic target is 60 FPS, so we decided to check out some 1080p. In 1080p, the card managed to perform exceptionally well, particularly in Back for Blood, where we managed to get an 88 frames per second on average. Doom Eternal with 119, so that was exceptionally good for the card. We also managed to get over 60 frames per second in Spider-Man Remastered, but again, we did suffer for the other ones. Pretty much as we went along and the games got newer, the card suffered more and more, all the way up to one of the latest releases, which was The Last of Us Part 1, where we only managed to see an average of 28. Now that meant that that game wasn't very playable at all, it was very stuttery, there was a lot of jerking on the screen, so you couldn't get a great experience on that. Now for the four games that we couldn't get the 60 frames per second on, we decided to do some tweaking in the settings to see if we could actually get it to look pretty decent. When it came to God of War, we managed to get an average of 46 frames per second when running in a 1080p high preset. And to improve that, we had to make several tweaks. Turning the overall quality to an original preset and enabling FSR 2.1 to a balanced setting, we managed to get an average of 72 frames per second with a 1% low of 64. This actually meant that the game was extremely playable, and because the game looked so good, even in an original quality, it provided a great gaming experience. Red Dead Redemption 2 was actually a reasonably old title, but in 1080p high we still only managed to get an average of 44 frames per second. That meant that the game was more than playable, but to be able to boost that up, we decided to change the quality to a medium setting, where we actually received an average of 77 with a 1% lower of 61. Again, the picture quality wasn't actually reduced that by that much. The game was more than playable and still looked fantastic. So again, that is another win for the RX 580. Cyberpunk 2077 was actually a very difficult game for this card to run, where we only managed to get an average of 37 frames per second with a 1080p high preset. To be able to improve this, we set the quality settings to medium, which again, didn't really reduce the quality of the picture that much and then enabled FSR 2.1 with a balance setting, which gave us a new average of 60 frames per second with a 1% low of 49. Again, that means that the game was more than playable and you could get a great playing experience with that. As expected, the most difficult game to play was of course The Last of Us Part 1. The RX 580 really struggled with this title, particularly in 1080p with a high quality setting, only managing to get an average, of course, of 28 frames per second with a 1% low of 19. Many would kind of call it unplayable, so we decided to change some things around and see what we could get out of it. Changing the quality setting to an ultra low setting did affect the quality of the picture quite a bit. It kind of gave you more of a console or original console kind of view. And then, of course, we had to enable FSR 2.1 with an ultra performance setting, which kind of reduced it even more. But we did manage to get an average of 49 frames per second with a 1% low of 32, so the game was more playable, it was a much more smoother, but would you really want to play that game in those kind of settings? Probably not. You could actually just buy yourself a PlayStation 4, and you could play the original game perfectly fine with a very similar kind of quality picture. So of course the RX 580 is old and it is starting to struggle in some of those more newer titles, but it doesn't mean that the card is dead. It is alive and kicking when you play some of those more modern, well-optimized games, but of course, with the really super new stuff, it's starting to struggle, and for those of you out there with these, it's probably time to start looking at an upgrade. That doesn't mean that you should totally get rid of these cards though, because if you don't play those games, you're perfectly fine with it. I've been super excited about picking up one of these cards for a long time now, and the excitement hasn't gone at all. Even though the card does struggle with those super new titles, it doesn't really matter to me. I think that these cards are fantastic, and especially the model that I've got. It's super quiet, it's super cool, and it gives you the ability to pretty much play everything. So I don't think you can go wrong with these, particularly for the money. If we just take a quick look across the whole of the results that we got, we can see that the card is clearly not a 1440p card where it really struggles across everything but for 1080p you can get a decent experience out of most games. I'm actually going to keep this card around for a while now it's going to be added to the collection. We do have quite a significant collection of AMD graphics cards now and I think this one's going to be fantastic in there. I may even look at building a system that is more representative of the period of this card just to see how well the whole system comes up so make sure you subscribe to the channel if you want to catch that. Let me know in the comments below do you still have an RX 580 or even an RX 480 they're very similar cards and let me know the experience you're having. Do you have any plans to upgrade your card or is it perfectly fine for you? And I'm sure as always we will catch you in the next one.